Today I'm going to be building the MurfPad MacroPad slash NumPad from MechWild. In the box we have a FR4 plate and base, a PCB, some MechWild stickers, resistors, this bag of screws, standoffs, and rubber feet, a Pro Micro, an OLED screen, some LEDs, and a rotary encoder and knob. The parts that I'm supplying myself include this USB-C Pro Micro, which I'll be using in this build instead of the micro USB one, some Gazoo Boba U4Ts from Pantheon Keys, Duroc V1 stabilizers, some EPBT X Gawk black and white keycaps, and these rivets, which I'll be using as makeshift hot swap sockets. The first thing I did was flash the Pro Micro to check that everything was working all right. Then I soldered it to the headers. Then I set that aside and soldered the rivets into the PCB. These rivets are a cheap alternative to Milmax sockets. However, unlike Milmax sockets, they don't actually hold onto the switch legs, which is why they are much less costly. This is the first time that I'm trying them out. Hopefully they work well enough. Then, I soldered in the reset switches, resistors, and clipped the legs off the resistors. I also tried soldering in the LEDs, but I found it way too difficult. I was unlikely to turn them on anyway, so I didn't mind leaving them out. In hindsight, I should have bent the resistor legs a little more nicely, so that the clipping wasn't as difficult, but oh well. Next, I soldered the Pro Micro onto the PCB. It ended up being a bit wonky because I had not soldered it high enough on the headers, but I think it ended up being okay. After that, I soldered the header to the OLED and then the OLED to the PCB. I managed to do this better than expected. The OLED actually lined up with the cutout on the plate. Then I soldered in the encoder. I was sure that I had messed up somewhere, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that everything worked when I plugged it in. I looped the staffs with some Crytox 205G0 and wrapped the ends with some band-aid pieces.
Now I'm just adding the switches, screwing it all together and adding the keycaps. As for the rivets, they worked pretty well. About 30% of the keys didn't work at first, but after taking out the switches, bending the legs a little, and putting them back in, they all worked fine. The rivets are about as good as your plate. With single switch plate holes, you can lift up the entire bar with one key. However, in places where the plate holes are larger to accommodate many layouts, the switches come off very easily. Overall, I think they are a decent hot swap solution for tray mount or similar boards where the PCB is screwed in. That's it for this build log. I will be using this board as a numpad and on another layer as arrow keys since I will be downsizing from a 65% board.